Hello students, uh, welcome to another video lecture for Comsai 125 Operating Systems. In this chapter, we're going to look into paging. Uh, let's take a look at the concept of paging. So paging uh, splits the virtual address space into fixed size units called a page. Unlike in segmentation, where sizes for each uh, logical segment or section are uh, variable. So this is the main difference between paging and segmentation. Remember that in segmentation, each section of a process's address space will have its own base register and a limit uh, register to specify the location of the section of uh, a process address space in the physical memory. Now in the in paging, the splitting is fixed size. Usually uh, in typical operating system, this is uh, 4 KB or 4096 bytes. Now, in, adi in addition to splitting the virtual address space of the process, the physical memory is also split into fixed size chunks. And we call these chunks as page frames. I'd like to emphasize here, most students uh, are confused with, uh, with this. Okay? When we are referring to a page, we are actually looking at the virtual address space. And when we are looking at uh, physical frames, page frames, or just plain frame, we are referring to the physical memory. So here, the virtual address space of the process is split into fixed size called pages and the physical memory is split into fixed size chunks called frames, page frames or physical frames. Another interesting uh, concept of paging is the concept of a page table. A page table is associated with each process and basically it's just a lookup table to translate a virtual address to physical address. What are the advantages of paging? The first one is flexibility, meaning it's very effective in supporting the uh, address space abstraction. So we don't in paging, we don't need to make any assumption about how the heap or the stack grow. Right? So it, the behavior is uh, defined in the chunk. Then also simplicity, which is the ease of free space management. Since you are manipulating fixed size chunk, there are no transformations or formulas to convert the the size or uh, the size from from the uh, virtual address space to the physical memory. The page in the virtual address space and the page frame in physical memory are the same size. So it's uh, less computation and it's easy to allocate and maintain a release because you have fixed sizes. You don't have to usually keep track of the different sizes of, of each uh, uh, free item on the free frame or free page list. Let's take a look at a simple example of paging. So here on the left, you can see the simple uh, virtual address space of process. So let's say this is a particular process and it has 64 bytes, zero to 64. And it is divided into 
four pages. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four. And each page is 16 bytes. So this is the processor's view of its uh, memory. Then in the actual physical memory on the right, so this one is uh, 128 bytes and it is divided into 16 byte page frame. So the size of the page and the size of the page frame or the physical frame are the same 16 bytes. And the mapping uh, will look like this. So page zero of the address space is mapped here. Page one is mapped here. Page two is mapped here. And page three is not here. So what is missing in this figure is the page table. So we can actually construct the page table in this manner. So as mentioned, it's basically just a lookup table that tells where the page is mapped to the physical memory or to the frame on the physical memory. So let's say page zero is map to uh, page frame three. Page one is map to page frame seven. Page two is map to page frame five. And uh, page three is map to page frame two. So this is the page table for this particular process. Whenever uh, a process addresses something in the page, uh, it will look up in the, you say page zero, it will actually be located in uh, page frame three in the physical memory. Let's take a look at address translation. So since uh, we now have a, a paging mechanism, we have to be able to derive the mapping or actually we need to encode some information about the page in the address or a memory reference. So in paging, we have uh, two components in the virtual address. Recall that in segmentation, we also have the same mechanism. Okay. So here, a virtual address is divided into two parts, the VPN or the virtual page number and the, the offset. Let's say here that we have a six bit uh, address space. virtual address space so this is virtual so we can uh, so 0 1 2 3 4 5 we can use the uppermost bits to represent the virtual page number and then the offset within the page the first four bits this is how it will look like so for example if we have the virtual address of 21. In binary, this will be the representation of 21. And we're going to associate special meaning to the bits in the uh, in this address, in this representation. So we, we, we will use this two bits as the virtual page number, and we will use this as the offset within the page. So if we have two bits here to represent the virtual page number, then we can have uh, four pages for this particular process. So we can actually uh, uh, just actually uh, an example of that. Okay. Then to translate this to uh, physical address in the main memory, this is how it will look like. So there is a translator here that will translate this uh, 
virtual page number to a page frame number pfn and this will be the actual location in the physical memory the physical address so the, uh, the translation is like this so you have the virtual and then you have the physical address and this is the representation So the next question that uh, we might want to ask is, where are the page tables stored? Meaning, where is this stored? So as I uh, recall that page tables uh, map the virtual page number to the physical uh, page frame number of BFN. And usually they are stored in the memory and they can actually become uh, very large. For example, if you have a 32-bit address space with uh, 4 kilobyte pages, okay, if you have this set up, then to, have, to be able to have uh, 4 kilobyte pages, we need 12 bits for, for the upsell. So 32 minus 12, that will give us 20. So we're going to use the upper 20 bits as the uh, virtual page number to, to hold the virtual page number. So this uh, 20, 20 bits will actually take up uh, about 4 MB for a table, right? So, 2 to the 20 entries times uh, 4 bytes per page table entry. And this can actually be uh, get very large if you have a lot of processes. Imagine you have, say, you have uh, 100 uh, processes, and each process will require 4 MB page table. So it will take up a lot of space, memory space. So here's an illustration of where the page table is stored. So usually the kernel will have a, will manage or will be the one to maintain the page table. It's one of the data structures that it will need to maintain. So this example, we have 35752, which is uh, actually what we have here, 3752. And this is the index, so 0, 1, 2, 3. This is how it will look like. So 0, 1, 2, 3. This represents the page table in the physical memory. So remember that everything should be stored in the physical memory. The next question that we can ask is what is uh, what is in the page table? What information is stored in the page table? As you've seen already, uh, we can just represent a page table as an array indexed by the uh, virtual page number. So it's basically uh, an array data structure. So sometimes it's referred to as a, a linear array or linear page table. Yeah, this is a simple representation. So the index of the array will be the virtual page number. And the value in the array will be the page table entry. Usually it's a number that is encoded, uh, that is uh, encoded with information, uh, four byte uh, integer encoded with information. So what are the common fields in a page table entry? So we have the valid bit, which indicates whether a particular translation is valid. So valid invalid bit. A protection bit uh, indicates whether the page could be read from, written to, or executed from. A present bit indicating whether the page is in physical memory or on disk swapped out. Uh, we'll discuss swapping later. So present bit will tell us whether that page is in the main memory or on the disk. And the next one is the dirty bit, indicating whether the page has been modified since it was uh, brought into 
memory so that the copy on the disk and the copy on the in the memory will be consistent so we have graphic bit and then uh, reference bit access bit indicating that a page has uh, been accessed we'll talk about this the uses of these uh, flags uh, in later chapters so here we have an example uh, x86 uh, page table entry so uh, 32 bits so as i mentioned a while ago four byte encoded with information so this is the entry in an x86 page table so you have the page frame number how many bits so uh, from bits 12 to bits 31 that would represent the page frame number these are probably some uh, reserved slots and then we have the different flags encoded as bits in the uh, as bits in the page table entry so by just judging from the way we use the from where the page table is, is stored paging is actually too slow why first uh, uh, the page table is stored in the main memory okay so to be able to access uh, an actual memory location you have to consult the page table first so to find a location of the desired page table entry uh, the starting location of the page table is needed so it's somewhere in the main memory which is managed by the kernel for every memory reference paging requires the os to perform an extra memory reference which is basically to access the page table to get the page table entry now this page table uh, the starting address of the page table is actually stored in what we call the page table base register so that's why paging is, is slow you have to uh, have two memory accesses so here is a pseudocode on how to uh, access memory with paging. So this will be helpful in your lab exercise or lab activity for this week. So the input uh, in this uh, pseudocode will be the virtual address because what we are doing here is to illustrate how to access memory with paging. So if you are given the virtual address, first you need to extract the virtual page number. So to do that, you need to do a bitwise end with the VPN mask, meaning how many bits are you going to, uh, which bits are you going to extract from the virtual address space. And then from that, you shift to the right to get the actual uh, virtual page number. To illustrate this, maybe let's go back a little. Okay, so this is, let's say this is the virtual address 21. So the binary representation is 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 1. So this is the virtual address. So we would like to extract these uh, two bits here. How are we going to do that? So the first uh, thing to do is to, as shown in the, so let's just use this, uh, let's just go back to the silo code. So let's say we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So this is the address. So it says here that we have to uh, bitwise end with the VPN mask. So the VPN mask okay, will be one, 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 two, three, four, because we want to extract this uh, top two bits. 
So if you perform this bitwise operation, this will be 0, 0, 0, 0, and then uh, 1, 1, uh, and 0, 1. Right? So this will be the result of that. And then we need to shift right by some shift value. So to be able to do that, so the shift value should be 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So that will be uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And this is now our uh, virtual page number. Then we're going to uh, form the address, uh, form the address of the uh, page uh, table entry. So first we have to look, uh, we have to find the starting address of the uh, page table. So to do that, we have uh, some value in the page table uh, base register here. And we get that value and then we add, basically we just index this, we add the what we got as the virtual page number, multiply that by the size of the page table entry to be able to get the address of the page table entry okay, for, for this particular uh, virtual page number. Remember that the virtual page number is used to index the page table. So we're going to get the page table uh, entry address and then we can extract the actual page table entry so it's using some function and the parameter as the address of the page table entry then once we have the pte the pte will be uh, something like this okay. We can check for the fields. Let's say if is it valid. If 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 valid is false, we raise an exception, segmentation fault, meaning you try to access a virtual memory that is not valid. Uh, you also need to check for protection bits. So if you're trying to access, if you're trying to execute code on that particular memory area, but there is no execute permission, so you raise an exception. Otherwise everything is good what will happen is we need to get the offset from the virtual address space so okay so to uh, get the offset we simply use the offset mask. So the offset mask will be 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so to be able to get 1, uh, to get 0, 1, 0, 1. And this will be the offset. The actual physical address can then be computed as the uh, PFN field in the page table entry, okay, so this one here. Uh, so it will uh, shift okay, the PFN value to the left by some PM, PM, uh, PFN shift, and then the actual offset will be bitwise poured to that to get the physical address. And then you access the memory from the physical address. So access memory accepts a physical address. Yeah. Notice the when we have paging, that's why paging is slow, is because we have two memory access to be able to get the actual value and place it in the register. So let's have an example memory trace. So we have here a simple program called fragment. And we have an array, 1000 array elements. 
okay, with, with 1,000 elements and array with 1,000 elements. And then we have a for loop here that initializes each element of the array to zero. And we compile this and then we execute. When uh, this code is actually compiled, it will generate uh, these four instructions. So this is the memory offset. Okay. And then these are the assembly code. So we have uh, the move instruction. So zero, this will be zero. And this one will be the location. This assumes that array, the starting address of the array is in EDI. And then EAX and uh, four is used to index. This one will be the index into the array. So initially it moves zero to this location. And then it will increment EAX, which is the index, and then compare whether uh, it is 1,000 already. And then if not equal, uh, look back. So given this uh, particular code fragment, and let's say we want to uh, trace uh, the flow or the memory access of this, uh, let's have some assumptions first about the system. So we can assume that the virtual address space size is 64 kilobytes. Okay? And then the page size is one kilobyte. And we have a linear page table array base, meaning we index the page table with the virtual page number. And this uh, linear page table is located at address uh, 1024. Then this will be the contents of the page table. So the address space of that particular process will have uh, two main sections, one for the code and one for the array. So the page table will have this uh, mapping. So let's say we assume that um, the code is placed in the in VPN uh, VPN one, so it is mapped to uh, page frame number four in the physical memory. And then the array, if uh, since uh, our code here is one thousand array of ints, then it will require uh, four thousand bytes. And if you assume that uh, this array is uh, located starting at address uh, 40,000, virtual address space uh, 40,000 to 44,000, then this will be the mapping. So the VPN, VPN will be, VPN certainly will be up to, let's say, uh, page frame number seven. Right. VPN 40 will be mapped to Page, page frame eight, uh, VPN 41 will be mapped to page frame nine and VPN 42 will be mapped to page frame 10. So this will be the mapping. Of course, the uh, page table is also in the main memory located uh, in this location. So this will be the trace of uh, the first five iterations of this, uh, this code here. So it says here that each instruction, each instruction fetch generates two memory references. So remember that When executing this code, this will be placed in the memory, and the first step is to fetch the instruction. So whenever uh, we fetch an instruction, let's say fetch uh, the address here, fetch uh, 0x1024, right? Uh, 
it will generate two memory references. So one to the page table and another to the actual location of the instruction. So let's take a look at the figure here. It's, it is divided into three parts. Uh, the, this one is for the code. The next one is for the array. And this one is for the page table. So on the left, we have the virtual address. Right? And this on the right, we have the physical address to show the mapping. So what we're saying here is whenever we have a fetch instruction, let's say fetch the next instruction, it will generate uh, a memory reference on the page table. So let's say fetch. So after fetching, we now know the, uh, we have to access the actual, uh, actual code in the, uh, the actual code in the code area, in the, uh, in the area where the code resides. So this is the uh, address uh, 1024, right? And then after uh, that has been uh, extracted, it will be uh, executed. And since the instruction, the move, uh, the instruction is a move instruction with a memory reference, it will need to access the uh, first element of the array. So it has to consult the uh, a memory reference will be made on the page table uh, 39. Okay, so this one here, page table 39. So because we have a move instruction, and then uh, once that's done, we're going to get the uh, element, uh, the first element actually here, okay? And the, the instruction will execute, right? After which it will uh, fetch the next instruction. So the next instruction is uh, increment. So before, being able to access the actual instruction, it has to consult again the page table entry. Okay, so that's why. So those in page table one uh, pertains to the page table entries. Okay, so that's essentially uh, what happens in this uh, iteration. That's why we say that. Uh, with paging, it is actually slow because for every actual memory reference, you have to consult the page table, which also resides in the main menu. So this is the end of this chapter. Uh, in the next chapter, you're going to learn how to speed up the process by introducing a cache called translation uh, look aside buffer or TLBs.